now we're going to switch over to, I think, you know, we, we really have two kind of subtypes of, um, of, of uh, breast cancer, ER positive and HER2 negative, that have, or HER2 positive, have a lot of really good uh, and really exciting data. We're getting now into uh, triple negative disease, uh, where we have fewer things, although I think that there's the beginnings of the notes for excitement. Um, Denise, what do you, how would your approach now for someone that walks in the door with metastatic triple negative disease? Well, I think, you know, the, the backbone still remains chemotherapy currently. I think um, the first thing we do is look at clinical trials. I think this is a group that there's the most enthusiasm of signaling them out for clinical trials. And there's a, an abundance of trials with lots of different targets. Um, they're all still signal finding, but I think the signals that have emerged um, have been exciting. I think what we've also learned is that triple negative isn't a one size fits all. So a lot of heterogeneity that is encompassed by the term triple negative. So within that are subgroups of patients and we're learning to you know, try to find out a, a way to identify them um, that's gonna be reliable and reproducible. So you have you know, the group that's uh, most sensitive to androgen receptor, the LAR group of triple negatives. And for those patients, their biology, their disease course is very different um, and so the strategies are really looking at some of the androgen receptor inhibitor agents that we may talk about I think um, immune therapy I think there's lots of interesting signals there's a group that does seem to respond and have dur durability um, with just immune therapy and I think there's a lot of enthusiasm of combining our standard chemotherapy agents with immune therapy and so you know I think the first thing I do is look at our tri uh, clinical trial menus um, and then you know I still embrace chemotherapy Therapy for these patients, and I don't think that you know there's lots of signals of maybe their advantages to platinums um, in these patients in the metastatic first line setting. Most of them hadn't gotten a platinum in the adjuvant setting, although that's changing now a little bit too, so we consider that. Um, I think the aniparib data, you know, kind of put gem carbo as a combination. Some of these patients have uh, large tumor burdens, maybe more symptomatic um, relapses in a short amount of time from their taxane exposure, so doublets um, have been utilized in that first line setting. So, you know, I think I, I look at a lot of agents and kind of try to tailor it to the patient and what we can kind of glean from their history, how long that disease free interval has been since adjuvant therapy. So speaking, I want to just interject one thing. So yesterday, CreateX was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. It finally got published, and we are waiting for this. Just for our, our, our um, audience, these are women with all stages, all subtypes of breast cancer, a Korean population, and I think Japanese also. It was a fairly large trial, I think it was several hundred women, it was like 800 women, 900 women. Uh, who were randomized to no therapy or adjuvant capecitabine afterwards. And in the triple negative subgroup of patients, the five-year disease-free survival in the New England Journal paper, I think had a difference of about 10%. It was like 69 versus 59%. After how long follow-up? Uh, I think about three to five years follows, a fairly substantial follow-up. So the issue is that, you know, this didn't make any sense with all the neoadjuvant studies that have ever been done. But is now capecitabine a favored drug for triple negative breast cancer? Well, well, first Are we going to start using it in triple negative breast cancer more often? Remember, this is the only trial that focused on those that had residual disease. You know, right. the, the other capecitabine and anti-metabolite trials were borderline positive. I mean, some of them, were bare, but, but they gave it to everyone. So the question here is you're taking an exceptionally high-risk group of patients. And um, the, the, the study was positive overall both in the whole group, both Correct. hormone receptor positive and negative. But if you broke it down, clearly the benefit was mostly in the hormone receptor negative. I think it's real. Uh, there's a lot of questions as to whether that population may metabolize fluoropyrimidines differently. We know that, 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 that they do. In fact, there are more fluoropyrimidines approved in Japan and Korea than there are in the U.S. for that reason. Uh, so maybe some can argue that it may require a confirmatory trial uh, in a more diverse population. But nevertheless, I think it's a positive study. It was designed that way. And for that group of patients, I think it's reasonable. In fact, the NCI has been yes. asking the cooperative groups that have that study designed post-neoadjuvant trial to change. They the, have. The ECOG, ECOG did that. It's now capecitabine now cap versus, versus platinum. And yes. then there's a, a, an immunotherapy study for residual triple negative disease right, after neoadjuvant therapy where they, they are now allowing right. Uh, right. post, uh, uh, post-operative uh, chemotherapy. So do we, but I guess the question, bringing this back to triple negative for a minute, does this mean now this is a go-to drug for us in triple negative disease? 
Are you going to extrapolate that data? Well, in into that situation. situation. In that setting, in that just in that setting. Yes. But in the metastatic yes. setting, will you no, extrapolate no, it? No, no, because no, it, could be also, it could also be biology. So I think right. what we know for triple negative disease is that recurrence occurs <coughs> immediately, very, very early on. So it could well be that in this trial, what you are treating is actually subclinical disease that is about to recur. So I think it's as much biology as mechanism of action.